You ever make anything happen? Anything you couldn't explain? You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? First year should note that the dark forest is strictly forbidden. Good afternoon, class. Welcome to your first flying lesson. Stick your right hand over the broom and say, up. Mr. Potter, our new celebrity. Good morning. I hope you guys are having a great day. What we are doing today is we are going to dive into the magical world of Harry Potter. To do that, we're going to be doing a couple of arts and crafts and hopefully do a couple of fun clips along the way. But starting out, if you are not familiar with Harry Potter, this is the story of a boy who got a strange letter one day. Dear Potter, your presence is required at the request of your children. No, wait. Harry didn't get the letter from the pirates. Harry got his letter from an owl. Hedwig! Guess who I got a letter from? Hmm. <laughs> anyway, Harry finds out he gets to go to a magic wizarding school. We don't have to live under the stairs anymore, Hedwig. And discovers that he is, in fact, a wizard himself. You're a wizard, Harry. Upon arriving at the school, one of the important characters that Harry meets pretty quickly is the headmaster, Albus Dumbledore. Albus is also a professor and tells him, You shall not pass! Because that's something teachers are always saying, right? Along the way, Harry meets Ron. Ron Weasley, do you really have that scar? Wicked. And Hermione. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. She needs to get her priorities straight. Who become his best of friends and share his many adventures. Sword of Godric Gryffindor. It only comes to those who have great need of it. I really need a sword right now. Yay! Hi, Kaya! Along the journey, Harry learns lots from his school, but he also learns a couple very important lessons as well. Now understand this, Harry, because it's very important. Not all wizards are good. And somewhere along the line, he got a lot of money. Anything from the trolley, dears? We'll take the lot! Wicked! Anyway, getting right into it, some of you have heard that I've gotten my job at Ollivander's and I'm now making wands. Ollivander himself told me, I think it is clear that we can expect great things from you. So let's put my skills to the test and see if I can't teach you guys how to make a wand. We're gonna make two wands today. We're gonna make our good guy wand and our bad guy wand just for funsies. And I will tell you all the supplies you will need along the way. So as most things Hollywood go, a lot of times the character's props identify a lot with who the character is. So it is just fine if you want to build a wand that matches your personality. Or if you want to make one that looks like it came straight out of the movie, great! We'll teach you how to do that. When a student first starts attending Hogwarts, they get assigned to a house. This is done by sitting there, putting the sorting hat on your head. The sorting hat will tell you which house you're put into. Gryffindor! Yay! A lot of the costuming and character development is based on the houses. Some of you have probably taken the online quiz or something and found out which house you're put into. Do me a favor and drop that in the comments right now. Which Hogwarts house were you assigned to when you took the quiz? I'm curious to hear. I know mine's cliche, but I was actually assigned to... So let's get going and build these wands. First thing you're going to need is a dowel from the craft store. You can decide the width that you want. And here's what else you're gonna need. Some kind of saw to cut the wood, a hot glue gun, some hot glue sticks, your choice colors of paint, some paint brushes, and whatever kind of ornaments that you decide to decorate your wand with. You don't have to have it, but I'm also going to be using a heat gun. You'll see what I mean. First thing we're gonna do is cut our dowel. And because we're gonna be working with paints, glues, and plastics, we're gonna make sure our hands are protected for that. First thing we're going to do, got my glue gun heated up here, is we're going to start making some lines for where our handle's gonna be. So I've decided mine's gonna be about the size of my hand and I'm just going to start drawing lines down the length of the wood here. It definitely does not have to be perfect unless you're going for a super pretty wand um, but if you're going for a more earthy look like it was cut from a branch or something like that 
then the more misshapen the better. And just go ahead and work your way all the way around. So most of the good guys in the Harry Potter movies tend to have the earthy ones, you know, the ones that look like they're tree branches or something like that. So that's what we're going to go ahead and go for with our good guy wand. The bad guys tend to be a little bit more, you know, well carved or mechanical or something like that. And then of course your ultimate bad guy has his bone wand. Um, but we'll just stick with the basics for this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a more Harry Potter approach and, um, just do one that looks like, you know, it's got the uh, heavier wood down here and then it's lighter across the top and we'll just see what happens at the end here. But I've got my first layer on and as you can see, definitely not perfect. But that's good because what we want is something that's going to look more natural than homemade or whatever. Now Harry's wand has a couple of knots in it. Um, so what I'm going to do is start building those up right now. And the way I'm going to do that is just make a little puddle of glue like that. And I'm going to let that dry there. And I'll go ahead and do that in a couple more spots. And then also the base of his wand is built up a little bit. So I'm going to start building up the base. And basically all I'm going to do is apply glue as I twirl it around to try to keep it a little bit even. As you can see I got the uh, base built up a little bit. Now while that dries completely I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a little trick. This is where the heat gun comes into play. What I'm going to do is take one of these kitchen prep gloves and I'm just going to cut the length from the fingers, so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So what you can see is that it's just still smooth just because it's a dowel and what I want to do is I want to give it a little bit of texture. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of carve off the tip to give it more of a point, but then I'm going to use plastic to make it look like more of a wood grainy and you'll see what I mean as we go, but let me show you what that looks like. So I went ahead and put a little bit of a tip on it and kind of roughed up around the edge just for fun. Um, and now what I'm going to do is use some of these pieces and start layering it just like that. Slide it on. I'm going to use a short one so that I have more texture on the top. And after that I'm just going to do these one at a time and heat them up and you'll see Actually, you probably won't even be able to notice until we do the paint um, exactly what kind of effect this is going to have in the end result, but I think you'll like what we're going for here. There's the first layer. Go ahead and do one more here. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is keep bulking up the uh, glue layers that I've got on here and uh, we'll just see what a second coat looks like. And then the best way to know if you're almost done is just to, you know, kind of turn it and make sure that you're more or less even all the way around. Um, Harry's wand has a base to it that kind of stands out, almost like it was snapped off a tree or just cut at a thicker spot. So I went ahead and added that little platform on the bottom. We need to make sure that the glue has a chance to dry all the way because you don't want to paint over wet glue. Um, and then we'll get it painted. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my wand two-tone. Um, the handle I'm going to make a little bit darker than the rest of it. What I think I'm going to do is use a burnt umber for the handle. And then for the shaft, I'm going to go ahead and use a melted chocolate, which is a bit of a lighter brown. Not terribly light, but noticeably lighter than the burnt umber. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of a black wash. Now, rather than relying on the fact that the glue itself is going to give it enough texture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a knife and create a little bit of texture like lines and wood and things like that um, to make sure that when I do my black wash um, it shows up looking more like wood than well melted glue. 
And then always remember when you're painting that a little bit of paint does go a long way so you don't have to pour a whole ton. Just a couple drops ought to do it on this little project. Another thing to keep in mind is if that your shading doesn't turn out quite like you expected. For example, if my burnt umber isn't quite as dark as I want it to be, I can always put a drop of black in it to darken it out. So just be creative, you know, just kind of do your thing and don't be too shocked if you end up needing to add multiple layers or coats of paint because, hey, it happens. Have fun with it. That's the important part. We're having fun, right? And all I'm going to do for the basic black wash is get a tiny little dab of black onto my paintbrush and then I'm going to wipe it off on a piece of paper as much as I can so it stops leaving streaks. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paint the brush with that and what that's going to do is barely bring out the texture. It's almost doing nothing at all, but it is doing something and you'll see. Can you see that texture starting to come out? You don't want to do it too much, but a little bit is going to go a long way and it's going to look great. We're going to go ahead and let that dry completely and while we do that, um, before we move on to the bad guy wand, I want to dabble a little bit with floating candles. Now these are really cool. In the Harry Potter movies, they've got the floating candles that are in the Great Hall. What we're going to do real quick is just build a couple of them to hang from the ceiling and just make it look fun. For this project, what you're going to need is either like paper towel cardboard rolls or even toilet paper rolls. What I like to use is the gift wrap rolls because you can cut them to whatever size you want. So the items that you're going to need for this are, well, the gift wrap roll, a bit of white paint, your glue gun and some glue, a little bit of tape, some fishing line, a toothpick, a pair of scissors, a paintbrush, and one of those little electric fake candles. First thing you need to make sure is that your little candle will fit inside the uh, roll that you've got. It's okay if the roll is too big, but if it's too tight, then you don't want it like sitting on top, like whatever, you know. So make sure it fits inside there. Second thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and cut the roll of paper towel to the length of candle that you want. Depending on the height of the ceiling that you're going to be using, you don't want them too long because you don't want your head hitting on them the whole time. But uh, some kind of medium length would be fun, right? I don't know. Let's go ahead and uh, cut and see what happens. So this is going to go ahead and be my uh, candlestick. What you need to decide is which is going to be the top and which is going to be the bottom. The reality is because you're going to be walking under them, you need to cover up the hole on the bottom so that you can't see up into it um, and it's going to look like a candlestick and not like a paper towel with a hole in the bottom. I'm just going to take some tape and just tape up the bottom. Now I have a bottom to my candle and once we paint over that you won't even tell that it's there. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our glue gun and we're going to start running hot glue down it and what it's going to look like is it's going to look like the hot wax that's rolling down from a candle. So we'll do it one layer at a time and this will make it look like the candles burned multiple times by doing layer upon layer. Some will be thicker than others, some trails will run long, some will run short. And it's up to you how you really want to make it look but uh, just go ahead and start putting down your lines of uh, wax. Just like that. Now if you've ever burned a candle before, you'll notice there's more wax around the top than there is down towards the bottom. So we want to do more layers up around the top. So we'll go ahead and add some of those. There isn't really a right way to do this because the candles will spill however they're going to spill. So, um, But one thing you also want to do is kind of get a rim around the top. And the thicker you make this top rim, the more the glue will start to run down on its own. That is awesome because that's kind of the natural look that you're going for with a candle. And just go ahead and keep that up for a little bit. And of course the more layers that you do, the thicker the wax will look when you go to paint it. So that's okay. Um, try not to get too much wax on the inside because, well, that glue building up will give you trouble when you go to put your candle in. 
Once you are satisfied with the uh, glue that you've put on here, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and use your toothpick. What this is going to do, this is going to do two things. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to be used to hang your candle from the ceiling. So we're going to stick it through sideways kind of like that. Um, but what it's also going to do is it's going to support the candle inside, can set inside and rest on it um, so that it doesn't just drop right through. Um, so you're going to want to put it at a height that's good for your candle. Make sure your candle drops inside just a little bit, not so much that you can't see the flame and not enough that you can see the candle bit itself, but somewhere in here it will be good. So let's go ahead and poke a hole so we can get our uh, toothpick in there. just like that. Now if it's sticking out too far that you don't like it, you can take your scissors and snip off the ends of the toothpick. That's just fine. The reason we do it at this stage right now is so when we go to paint it, we can make sure that we paint that too so it's the same color as the rest of the candle. Before you go to paint it, make sure that your glue is dried all the way. But once it's dried all the way, let's go ahead and get it painted. What I've done is I've gone ahead and taken so a pure white and put a drop of cream in it to give it a little bit of a darker white but should be about candle white so let's paint it and once you've got it painted it should slightly resemble a candle in some way right I went ahead and painted the uh, top of my little candle white because it was black for whatever reason so what I'm gonna do drop it inside Take my fishing line, hang it from the ceiling, and as soon as it gets dark, I will show you what it looks like. Let's get back to the wands. Safety first, right? I can already feel the magic coming out of this. For those of you guys who have seen me do craft projects before, you know I like to work with a tray on my desk because it keeps my desk pretty. I've gone ahead and selected some pretty obscure pieces to try to make mine a little bit more interesting. So to decorate my handle, I got these little skull dudes at the uh, craft store. Basically, what I'm gonna do with these guys is just kind of attach them around the handle. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to put a little dab of glue, like that, and just kind of press them in. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put a few of these around. There we go. And while those are drying, I also got these bigger skulls that I'm going to go ahead and make a base with. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Now that these guys are dry, what I'm going to go ahead and do is put a little bit more hot glue in there to hold them in place. I also don't want too much glue on here for this next step. Uh, because when I bring the heat gun near it, it's really going to heat things up. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue doo -doo 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 -doo, and just stick it on. So basically just apply liberally and fill in the handle as much as you want. Don't cover up your decorations at all. Um, but I've got another crazy idea for the hilt. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it up up to the top here and then leave the hilt and I'll show you what I'm doing with that. So here we go. And you can see what that's starting to look like as that sets up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little ring around the hilt, just like this. And now I'm going to let that dry right there. So let me show you how I'm going to lay these on using that ring that we just poured. Just kind of attach these at the base like this so that they stand out in a, that manner. So I'll do a gentle ring down here. And while that's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and lay some of these in here. Now that the glue is completely dry, I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of paint on it. And while that's drying, let's do another decoration real quick. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create Lord Voldemort. For those of you who don't know who that is, he is the villain of the Harry Potter series. He is the guy that they refer to as a dude whose name 
we don't talk about. Or something like that. Anyway, what you'll need for this project is a balloon, one white balloon to be specific, a couple of markers, and some black cheesecloth. What we're going to do is we're going to blow up the balloon. Just like that. Tie it off. This is his head. Gonna use our markers to draw a face. Look at how good that looks. Then what you can do is post this up on something and drape the cheesecloth around him. Kinda like a robe. It looks so real. It's almost like you can see Voldemort. The boy who lived. Ridiculous. Okay, so that one might have been a little bit of a stretch. Maybe you can use it as a pinata or tape it to the back of Quirrell's head. Troll! Troll in the dungeon! Thought you ought to know. That's okay, let's get back to the wands. They're both done, let's take a look at what they look like. I think they turned out great. So there you guys go, that's some wand making 101. I'll be honest, I really think this one right here reminds me a lot of the Witch King Ring Wraith from Lord of the Rings for some reason. But I do love the texture and the way that these turned out. These are great. I can totally feel the magic in them and can't wait to do another Harry Potter project for you guys. I'm thinking in the next one we should make like one of the flying brooms. Stick your right hand over the broom and say up. What do you think? Make a couple brooms and then a few of us can play a game of Quidditch? It's a thought. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Don't forget to let me know which house you were assigned to. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the content. And stick around for that floating candle. Why couldn't it have been? Follow the butterfly!